all is not as it seems when it comes to so many of the sports, music, and movie stars that are at the forefront of headlines, charts, and podiums around the world. What many people do not realize is how many of them are involved in the occult and other dark spiritual arts that they believe they are using to ensure their diabolical success. Welcome back to the Good Fight Radio Show. I'm your host, Chad Davidson of Good Fight Ministries. And on today's episode, we're going to be digging in on more of a chronological look at so many of celebrities, whether from music or movies or sports even, and how so many of them have admitted to using dark forces and spiritual arts and just disgusting things in order to perform at their peak. And with me to discuss this very important topic is none other than the president and founder of Good Fight Ministries and pastor of Blessed Hope Chapel in Simi Valley, California, Pastor Joe Schimmel. Yeah, Chad, I think it's huge that we're dealing with this topic because literally not thousands, not millions, hundreds of millions, billions of people are being influenced on this planet by celebrities. And people will be shocked, but yeah, we're not shocked. We've been promote, you know, pointing this out for many, many years that many celebrities admit that they're being used by spiritual forces and they're influencing the masses through these forces. And no wonder the Bible says we're not wrestling against these celebrities, but the powers of darkness, the Bible says, Ephesians 6, that uses the children of, children of disobedience, Ephesians 2, to guide and influence and guide the course of this evil world. I think that's a really important thing to say is for people to understand that how they are being used, some of which, and I think when we look at some of the people we're going to be talking about, we're going to try to do a chronological order of this for you guys today. So you can see it's not just like, hey, there's this one guy and he's really, really yeah. bad and he's influenced all these people, but see that Satan has been working through them and we should not be surprised. We're talking about the top artists, by the way. Top artists, top sports stars. Yeah. Some people even call them the GOAT, and we'll get yeah. into that. We're not saying every one of them, but right. so too many of them. Yeah, no, far too many, especially when you really dig into it. And and Joe, one of the things, and I want to encourage you guys, make sure that you guys are liking and subscribing to Good Fight Ministries. We are trying to make sure you guys see every video that we come out with. Try to come out with two to three videos every single week, whether in long form, short form, or otherwise. And we're also working on a lot of documentaries that we're excited to get out to you guys as well. And if you're listening via podcast, guys, make sure you leave a five-star review if you feel so led. And all of this is just simply to get this in front of more people so more people can know about it and make sure you share it if you feel led. Because this is going to be an episode, guys, if you're listening right now, this is going to be an episode that for those who maybe haven't been following this, you're going to go, what? I had no idea. And Joe, one of the videos, and I want to encourage you guys to check this out because of an excerpt that we have on our channel from They Sold Their Souls for Rock and Roll. And if you guys have been on this channel any long, you know, that's how I came to Christ. I left atheism and came to Christ through that video. And a short excerpt from that video regarding Elvis has 1.5, over 1.5 million views on our channel. And you can check that out. And we also did another video on the recent movie that came out starring Austin Butler. But one of the things that I think people don't really understand is the truth of where, honestly, the success actually was coming from. And honestly, when you look at the, the new documentary, it ignores, it really does ignore the real secret behind his success. Amen. Yeah, when I did They Sold Their Souls for Rock and Roll so many years ago, Chad, I had no idea that the Elvis section would be something that people would just be so freaked out on uh, because I'd been exposing it for so many years even before we did the video. But I guess it makes sense. He's the king of rock and roll. But because he his only uh, award-winning album where he got a Grammy was a gospel album, uh, it kind of freaked people out because he was considered this you know good guy that just was pretty loose in some ways uh, and has a lot of troubles. But a lot of people didn't realize that Elvis Presley and we expose not just from quotes from him and, and others, but specifically from his bodyguards, his Memphis ma Mafia, which is made up of some uh, distant relatives and, and guys that lived with him for some time, that he believed he had occult powers. Elvis's former bodyguards revealed that Elvis not only believed that he had occultic powers, but that he was a prophet and that they were his disciples. Red West declared he likes to be in control. He likes to be a God figure. For many years, with real seriousness, he called us his disciples. 
Red West declared with conviction that Elvis possessed some kind of special powers, something like psychic powers, he said. Elvis proved it to me again and again. But it's interesting, Chad, because since he was a, a child, uh, he started to hear these voices, you know, and he thought one of these voices was his brother, Aaron, who died at birth. He th thought it was just, wow, it must be my brother. And in time, he started to realize he's being guided by these voices to promote the new age and the new age Christ and that he himself was a not the, the Jesus of the Bible, but he was a new age Christ initiating people into the the, the new age doctrines, uh, new spirituality, the occult. In fact, uh, he stopped Don Rickles one time and uh, when Don Rickles was doing his, you know, stand-up act on stage in Vegas, and he tried to get Don Rip Rickles to read from Madame Blavatsky's occult books. Elvis almost always had on hand a copy of Blavatsky's Voice of Silence, with which he would indoctrinate his fans by reading from Blavatsky's book on stage, as Larry Geller held it like a script prompter. One of his disciples declared, but Elvis often gets up in his acts during his performances and reads these things to the audience, says Sonny. One night at the Riviera Hotel in Las Vegas, he produced Blavatsky's voice and insisted that Don Rickles read passages from it. It's interesting because he named his gospel group, Elvis, The Voice. But he named it The Voice after The Voice of Silence by Madame Helena Blavatsky, a full-blown occultist, a full-blown Satanist who started Theosophy, who praises Satan throughout many of her occult books. In fact, her Lucis Publishing became Lucifer Publishing. In fact, let me give you a couple of quotes from her books. In fact, this is from The Secret Doctrine. She says, And now it stands proven that Satan, or the red fiery dragon, Lucifer, or the light bearer, is in us, is our mind, our tempter, and Redeemer. Redeemer means Savior, of course. Our intelligent liberator, the Savior from pure animalism. And this is who Elvis Presley was into. And a lot of people don't realize, Chad, that, that Elvis used these powers to, manip to manipulate audiences. If Elvis was not possessed by these entities that were using him and using him to indoctrinate people into the New Age movement, I don't think a lot of people probably would never have heard of Elvis Presley because this charisma that he had, this power, he recognized that he was in touch with these dark powers. In fact, Chad, when he died, he was sitting on the toilet uh, he fell off the toilet in a, in a position where he was stiff. And Ginger, his girlfriend, who he wanted to marry under an occult pyramid, had said that he was reading uh, sex and psychic energy. Uh, and it's about, it's a deep porn book from, uh, I've read excerpts about it. I didn't want to buy that book. But it's about how to manipulate occult powers and sex magic. And by the way, Satanist Alistair Crowley was all about sex magic. We can go on and on him about, about this, but you can check out our clip with a million and a half plus hits on uh, from our video, They Sold Their Souls for Rock and Roll. We've got the clip up, as Chad mentioned, on our Good Fight site. Well, since we've already talked about the king of rock and roll and using occultism for his powers, um, let's move down the line here because one of maybe the most successful band of all time, The Beatles, and John Lennon. People don't really realize how dark those guys were as well. Yeah. Throughout the 60s, right? You have Jim Morrison saying he got in touch with the spirit of music, Satan. You have Simply from the Devil and the, the, the Stones, uh, you know, promoting Lester Crowley, their satanic majesty's request and so forth. And we could just go through the 60s, which we do in our video expose. Uh, but you have uh, John Lennon, the leader of the most popular band of all times. Uh, basically, Chad, I mean, uh, from his youth, uh, feeling he was in touch with spirits. Uh, saying that he, as he was a musician, that when he wrote songs, he said, I felt like a psychic, a medium, that I was possessed. He said he was like a hollow temple. One spirit would come into him, and then that spirit would leave his body. Then another spirit would come into him, possess his body, then that spirit would leave. And it's interesting when you look at what he was about. I mean, he he, he called Jesus a, a, a fascist, B-A-S-T-A-R-D. Uh, he blasphemed the Lord Jesus Christ, said, we're more popular than Jesus now, we'll be proven right. The Christian will vanish, but we'll still be here. And uh, it's interesting, Chad, because he said the whole Beatle philosophy, he quoted Aleister Crowley, the Satanist, uh, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. He said in an interview before he died, the whole Beatle philosophy was do what thou wilt. And it's interesting because, uh, Chad, we know that he put Aleister Crowley up the top left back row of Sgt. Pepper's Only Hearts Club Band album, one guy over from the from the left in the top row. And uh, Aleister Crowley was a full-blown Satanist. And he's saying the whole Beatle idea was to do... Crowley's a deal, and I think it's quite interesting when you think about this because Sergeant Pepper, the song, Sergeant Pepper taught, you know, it's 20 years ago today, Sergeant Pepper taught the band to play. Well, that was 1967, Sergeant Pepper's. And we show that album is a concept album that goes back and forth 
with the stones, their satanic majesty request, and they did it together. But it's interesting because 20 years before was 1947 when L. Lester Crowley had died. And it's interesting because John Lennon said straight out, he said, I made it, talking about a success, he said, I made a pact with the devil. John Lennon couldn't have made it any clearer when speaking of the Beatles' success and stating, quote, I sold my soul to the devil. Yoko Ono also made a pact with Satan for Lennon and herself not long before Lennon's death. Albert Goldman reported in his book, The Lives of John Lennon, quote, Finally, it was time to consummate all these spells by making a living sacrifice and signing a pact with the devil. For Lena was not a white witch. She was the real thing, a practitioner of black magic. There was no knowing what she planned to do to seal the bond with Lucifer. All she would say was that a witch's moon was nigh and they had to make ready for the sacrifice. Lena said, quote, we've got to make a sacrifice with the blood of an innocent to the one who has the power. They sacrificed an animal to Satan, and Yoko ended up paying the Satanist $60,000. The price, though, would be far more for serving Satan. It would cost John Lennon his life and his soul. John Lennon said, quote, but my joy is when you're like possessed, like a medium. You know, I'll be sitting around and it'll come in the middle of the night or at a time when you don't want to do it. That's the exciting part. I don't know who the blank wrote it. I'm just sitting here and the whole blank song comes out. So it, you are like driven and you find yourself over on a piano or a guitar and you put it down because it's been given to you or whatever it is you tune into. We must be honest and ask ourselves a question. When we allow ourselves to be moved by music of bands like the Beatles and the Rolling Stones, who are we really allowing to move us? Wow, I mean, just incredible, Joe. And so we keep going through we Elvis, John Lennon, the Beatles. I guess if you're going to go to someone, go to the guy who bought a giant catalog of the Beatles music, none other than Michael Jackson. Yeah, you're talking about the king of rock and roll. You're talking about the leader of the biggest band ever, Lennon. Now we're talking about the king of pop, Michael Jackson, right? And uh, we'll just hit these quick because we got a lot of guys to hit and we want to just pick this up a bit. But it's interesting, as the king of pop, I mean, he was totally into the occult, contacting spirits in a, in a room full of mirrors. In fact, he believed that he was in contact with Liberace there and got his rights to do his music from Liberace. He would hang out in the living tree where he believed that these the spirits would, or he, he would channel lyrics or get lyrics. In fact, Chad, he would go to sleep because he felt at sleep. And that before I became a Christian, I was in the occult. I would receive my songs, a lot of inspiration in the midst of going through trance states in my bed. He said he'd go to bed. He'd want to be like to sleep a lot because that's where he'd receive a lot of his channeling. In fact, he said that he wanted to channel so much and go to sleep because, in fact, he told uh, a, a musical partner of his that I need to go get some sleep because if I don't get a song well, and go to bed and get a song, they're going to give it, he's saying, he's calling it God, he's going to give it to Prince instead of me. So it's really crazy when you think about it, man. You, people need to wake up. We're dealing with satanic forces that are manipulating the world. And by the way, he was super effeminate. Would, the whole transgender thing was happening with his whole promotion of that whole deal. And this is not an accident. This has been promoted a long time by these demonic entities. Well, since we've gone through the king of pop, let's go to the queen of pop. Because uh, Madonna herself, same. it just seems like they're all in the same boat here. Yeah, and because we're trying to hit these really quick, but Madonna talked about how uh, she's a tormented person because by demons, by the way. Uh, and it's interesting because she's been into a lot of the occult, uh, Kabbalah, Kabbalah and so yeah. forth. Uh, in fact, Chad, instead of, we won't dwell on her a long time, but I'll just say this. In January of 2023, because it's so current, uh, she just uh, did a promotion for a magazine where she basically appears where she's like channeling the Virgin Mary, supposedly. And she has a bunch of women dressed up like the 12 apostles, gantly clad, and she's pretends that she's Christ. She's just a total blasphemer. In fact, she said she wore a crucifix for so many years because she liked the idea of having a naked man on it. This is a kind of a despicable perversion that we're dealing with. Yeah, she even had entire songs where she is talking. You would think she was coming to pray about something, but really it's about doing sexual exploits. Just absolutely disgusting. Yeah, a blasphemer. So to get off of the music for just a little bit here, and let's get into comedy. And this is somebody who passed away. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, weird stuff that people may believe about uh, how he ended his own life. But uh, Robin Williams, he, yeah. he, this was an interesting one for a lot of people to hear. Yeah, it's heartbreaking. You know, he was so depressed when he, you know, he dies really sad. But uh, but he was depressed because he opened himself up to these demonic entities again. A lot of people that think of Robin Williams because they only know him for Mork and Mindy. A lot of older folks, you know, maybe my age are like, oh, he seemed more clean. Than, well, you haven't seen his stand-up stuff. In fact, he would brag about how he could become, you know, very perverse or, you know, well, he's one of the dirtiest stand-up comedians around. 
And he says, and this is interesting, yeah, literally, it's like possession, talking about when he would be taken over by these entities and what made him such a great comedian in the world's eyes. All of a sudden, you're in, and because you're in front of a live audience, you just get this energy that you just, it starts going. But there's also this thing, it's possession. In the old days, they would have burned me for it. He says, but there's something empowering about it. I mean, it's this place where you're totally, it's, it's Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and you, you really can't, you get to this other force. Maybe that's why I don't need to play evil characters in the movies he's talking about, because sometimes on stage you can cross that line and come back. So he's saying he doesn't have to play an evil character, Chad, because he becomes this evil character when these demonic forces uh you know, take him over. And brothers and sisters, you need to watch what you're looking at, man, because these forces are using people to increase the rebellion of mankind. And, you know, someone else whose life ended very similarly to Robin Williams as somebody who popularized and even probably maybe even more so with their death, the Seattle sound. And that is none other than Kurt Cobain. Yeah. And because we're trying to hit so many of these in rapid fire, I'll I'll just quickly say, I mean, he scrawled, he bragged about scrawling God is gay on a church and uh, he would, it was so blasphemous, but he, he channeled entities. He was involved in witchcraft. He said he wanted to get in touch with Anton LaVey, the head of the Church of Satan, to do music with him. I mean, that, that says it all. It's really heartbreaking, Chad. But the way he ended his life is like very tragic as well. Yeah, and when we're going down this timeline here, someone who's almost connective tissue from that era to the next is the guy they called the GOAT uh, when it comes to football, none other than Tom Brady. Yeah, and Tom Brady... Uh, he credited winning not just one, but at least a couple Super Bowls to the witchcraft uh, of his wife at the time. Uh, and basically, he basically states just straight out that uh, he won Super Bowls because she'd build him an altar that he would take to the locker room. And and so he'd participate in that witchcraft. And he's saying it works. He was shocked, but it actually works. You know, I've learned a lot from my wife over the years. And she always makes a little altar for me at the game because she, she just wills it so much. It's in. I have these little special stones and healing stones and protection stones and she has me wear a necklace and take these drops she makes and I say all these mantras. And I stopped questioning her a long time ago. I did, I just shut up and listened. And then in 2015, it was about early January and she she said, I just wanna let you know this is not gonna be your year. And of course we lost. I said, what does 16 look like? (laughs) And she said, 16 is going to be your year. She said, you're lucky you married a witch. I'm just a good witch. <laughs> just incredible. I mean, to see it from all these different perspectives and all these different avenues. And now we, we go and move on also to someone who grew up in a, they call themselves Christian. I don't know so much about that theology that they believe, but none other than Katy Perry, the girl who sang the song, I Kissed a Girl and Liked It. Yeah, and we're talking about the biggest uh, celebrities of all time here. And uh, Katy Perry, and this is a quote from her in regard to her witchcraft. She said, I don't stay single for long. I carry a lot of rose quartz, which attracts the male. Maybe I need to calm it down with some amethyst. So she uses witchcraft, but Chad, she admitted, uh, and they can see it with their own eyes, that she wanted to be the next Amy Grant a big Christian artist, but it didn't work out. So she sold her soul to the devil. I mean, I released a gospel record when I was 15 um, because I grew up in, uh, you know, a household where all I ever did was listen to gospel music and my parents are both traveling ministers. And so I kind of sang about, you know, what was going on in my life at 15. And that's how I got introduced to the music industry. Because I swear I wanted to be like the Amy Grant of music. Yeah. (laughs) But it didn't work out. And so I... Sold my soul to the devil. Sold my soul to the devil. I think that makes it clear enough, Joe. And so now we also are talking about the biggest, we want to try to hit every genre, and that's the goal here. So now we're into one of the biggest rappers of all time, none other than Jay-Z. Yeah, and he's definitely the most successful rapper of all time as far as making money, right, Chad? And uh, with his clothes and every, clothesline and everything. But, uh, you know, uh, he's literally, you know, sings Lucifer, you know, son of the morning. He, pray, he praises Lucifer for sinning, you know, with a righteous cause. And it's basically a worship song to Lucifer. And he talks about how he gets possessed by spirits. I get possessed by, by the spirits, by, by the spirits. I think that makes it pretty clear, Joe. And to think that somebody that at one point was rapping about how she wasn't going to set aside her Christianity in actually songs with Destiny's Child, but then she would go and marry somebody like Jay-Z. 
People were absolutely stunned, Joe, when they watched our video concerning Beyonce, Sasha, the Super Bowl, and Satan because they had no idea she was in touch with the demonic as well. Yeah, it's incredible. You were the one that told me I had no idea how good that video was doing, but you were saying not just based on, we've got over a million views on our website on that one, but over hundreds of millions you had said on Facebook that was. That's crazy, but it's interesting because uh, she literally, and I think this is important, she's put herself with the disciples at the Last Supper, put herself in the middle as Christ as well. And she, there's a lot of things they can go check out that video because we don't need to say all that because we're trying to hit this quick. But it's interesting, Kimberly Thompson, so I'm giving some new things that we haven't really said before. Kimberly Thompson, she was a drummer for seven years. She said that Beyonce, quote, she said, I worked for her uh, as a drummer for her band for seven years. She says she's into extreme witchcraft and dark magic. So she's a, she's a witness of this. But you know what? You don't even need that testimony. Even if you jettison that testimony, listen to what she said herself about how she couldn't even sing very good until she became possessed by a different entity named what she calls Sasha Fierce. And when people see me, sometimes I think that when they meet me and they speak with me, they're expecting Sasha. And um, I'm really kind of shy and not really shy, but more reserved and um, nothing like Sasha. I guess I wouldn't be very entertaining on the stage. So Sasha comes out <laughs> and she's fearless. So she can she can do things that I cannot do when I'm in rehearsal. I mean, I can try, but then it just doesn't happen. I can sing notes and sing strong and do all these things that when I'm just by myself, I can't do. And I remember right before I performed, I raised my hands up and it was kind of the first time I, I felt something else come into me, felt something else come into me. Well, Joe, I think that all of those artists and sports stars and everything make it really clear. I mean, where they're at, what they're doing, the, the energy, the spirit, honestly, that's behind it. They may call it an energy. They may call it this. But, Joe, uh, more recently, not only Megan Fox, who we've touched on at, at length, you can see it. We've done multiple videos on Megan Fox and some of her witchcraft, even telling somebody you've messed with the wrong witch, joking yeah. about eating carcasses yeah. out front of the house and so forth. But it seems like her new boy toy there with uh, MGK, Machine Gun Kelly, that he himself as well is getting involved in dark arts alongside of her. And it's pretty sad. Yeah, it's really, really sad. In fact, uh, she actually acknowledged what he was doing when she stated, you know, she talked about doing her different rituals blood rituals, they eat each other, consume each other's blood and uh, rituals with new moons and, and full moons and using tarot cards. And then she says this about him. It's just a few drops, but yes, we do consume each other's blood on occasion for ritual purposes only. <laughs> it is used for a reason and it is controlled where it's like, let's shed a few drops of blood and each drink it. He's much more haphazard and hectic and chaotic where he's willing to just like cut his chest open with broken glass and be like, take my soul. A version of that has happened a many times. A many times. So he is, I mean, you're talking about like Marilyn Manson type stuff with regard to the worship of demonic entities and Satan. Yeah, and she's even posted on Instagram that some of the actions that they do, their sexual exploits, mm -hmm. make the devil want to grab his rosary, as she says. Uh, not won't help either of them. But, but nonetheless, Joe, it's interesting because when it comes to Machine Gun Kelly, as you guys are going to see when he talks about this tattoo on his back, the fact is, is that he knows exactly what's going on. And he knows what's coming to him, actually. You got to check this out. I saw it as almost like this Revelations type image, you know, like the Four Horsemen you know, coming down and, you know, about to destroy the world. And I kind of saw the guy, you know, he has a cross up like this, kind of repenting for his sins almost. You know, like I've lived a, a dark life and it's kind of like time that I make, like I want to I wanna get right with myself before it hits the fans. So I mean, I kind of, I think when it all falls down, you know, all those sins and like that, you know, all that bad shit I did, you know, it's, it's, at the end of the day, I'm never, I was never happy I did that shit. So I think it's kind of like when you have a chance to repent, you take it. Wow, folks, uh, that was before he actually started doing all this. So obviously he hasn't repented. In fact, uh, he's just dove, you know, head, headlong into uh, the powers of darkness. And, uh, and the thing is, that's a deception to think that you could just repent later uh, when Jesus Christ comes back. Because the scriptures tell us uh, throughout the book of Revelation, uh, especially when you get toward the end of the tribulation period, in Revelation 9, after the trumpets have been blown uh, when you get to the near the last trumpets, uh, it says that they didn't repent of their sorcery, 
of Machine Gun Kelly be there. Hopefully he repents right now, man, because they won't repent of their of their sexual sin, their porneto, their pharmakeia, uh, their worship of demons and so forth. And then in Revelation chapter 16, in the context of Armageddon coming, it says they still didn't repent. And they didn't repent to give God glory. And uh, it's heartbreaking because those folks will be wiped out and sentenced, according to Revelation chapter 14, to the lake of fire where they have no rest day and night forever and ever. And by the way, that's you as well. You can say, man, I'm glad I'm not like Machine Gun Kelly. Man, I'm glad I'm not like, you know, this person or that person that you've exposed. I'm glad I'm not that bad. Well, guess what? We're all bad. We all deserve hell. We've all fallen short. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You and I, we all need to make sure that we repent because Jesus said, unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. And that word repent, metanoia, means to have a change of heart, a change of mind that leads to a change of life. And it's a beautiful word because it means to come out of darkness and Satan's domain, that broad path to hell, and to turn to the Lord Jesus Christ and have eternal life because he died for you. He paid for your sins. He rose again. He conquered the grave. He conquered, he conquered Satan. He conquered hell so you could have eternal life. So turn to him now while you still have an opportunity, while you still have breath. Don't wait till later because you may not have tomorrow. Repent today because today is your opportunity. Amen. God bless you guys. Hey, Joe Schimmel here. We want to thank you for watching. When I also encourage you not to forget to sign up or subscribe to Good Fight Ministries YouTube channel. We have the most amazing content. We also have the very popular Good Fight radio show where we examine all kinds of things in light of scripture as well as 511 News, which is also very eye-opening. And we also have mind-blowing video exposés that you won't see anywhere else. And our 24-7 online radio station, the Good Fight Radio Network, as well as my sermons from Blessed Hope Chapel over on the Blessed Hope Chapel YouTube channel. So thanks again. We'll see you later. And we just pray that the Lord blesses you richly as you seek his face. God bless.